Okay, this is going to be the first part of a video series on conceptual design from Format 360 to VR using our new 3ds Max interactive tools. So to get started, if you haven't seen Format, it's a conceptual modeling tool. At the moment, I'm signed in under my Autodesk ID, and this gives me access to a few tools for doing conceptual energy analysis, daylight analysis, access to tools like uh, the Dynamo player. I won't be covering this today, but if you do Dynamo Studio scripts, you can publish them to the cloud and then add them via Dynamo Reach uh, via a URL. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to use families from Revit. So we do have uh, some content here inside of my sample folders, and we can load these into our format environment directly and start to build up more intricate details of our designs. Uh, to get started, I want to pick a location. So I'm just going to go to Google Earth and pull down a satellite image from the location of the world that I want to start in. So I'm going to go to a residential site. Okay, so this is going to be my site and we can import that satellite image and go map or satellite. And this is going to be my site and I'm going to replicate this building block but redesign it and use some river families to set up my uh, design environment. So here's my site and I'm just going to import that satellite image. You just need to center it here and you can zoom out a little bit more if you want a little bit more context. And we'll just go finish importing. And now we have this as our uh, base model. So we can go to our top view here and here's our site. Now uh, if you want to rotate your grid to suit the orientation of the building just uh, right click and go to set axes and you can actually drag this down to say the uh, corner of the building i'll work off the uh the base here and i'm just going to rotate this around a little bit and get that and now i have my uh, grid aligned to the building so uh what i want to do here is uh sketch design the floor plate of the building and i can use any one of these tools here to do lines or polylines and arcs, and splines and rectangles and circles, or I could start off with actual massing objects, or I could use some of the other tools to join and cut geometry, sweep, uh, cover the faces of open geometry. You can do like a lofting type command, offset to the solid. You can shell us off it solid and add fillets. So I just like to use the basic sketch tools here, and uh, I'll uh, choose my my points here. So uh, if you want to be really accurate about this, just hit tab, so seven, um, and then of course you've got your XYZ gizmos, so tab, I'll make this 18, and then across here, 14. And again, you can also uh, start to align that, so you can see there you've got the align tools there to pick up that corner and then be drawing perpendicular. So it looks like it's about correct there, 18. And then uh, again, I'll just tab and do seven because it's a symmetrical building. And we'll make this one uh, eight. Again, just, just snapping to that point and then closing out. And now we have uh, the plate of our building. So going into the 3D view, very simply, we can uh, extrude this up. And I'll just give this a uh, just a uh, basic height here of 24 meters. Okay, so that's that's out the shell of our building. If we need to make adjustments to it, you can actually just select that facade. And if I want to add another meter, I can just bring that out by one meter. So pretty pretty easy thing to do here. And now we've got the starting point of our building. Now, what I want to do in the setup here is go to the properties, and we've got our sketch properties to Gerard Street. Um, there's some target areas you can set to and site areas. I, I won't get into this just now. What I want to do is go and set up some levels and I want to add multiple levels and I want my distance for my floor to floor for these levels to be um, 2.8 meters and the number of levels is, uh, we'll, put it, uh, we'll leave it 10 and go OK. So that's now set up our levels and we can see here it's updated all these elevations. What happens is with this information, when you bring this data into Revit, it will come through with these elevation markers as well. So you don't need to redo the work. And then if I just select that building, go back to my properties, um, I can call it um, multi-res building 01. 
uh, and I won't put on a layer just yet, yet just because my my uh, my volume there. If I turn on use levels, um, it's now going to give me my um, floor area by level. So uh, you can see here I haven't quite gone to level 10 yet because uh, the height um, was I think it was 20 28 meters. So I want to double check that. Sorry, 24 meters. Um, so uh, with that building selected, you can see there's no level 10. I need to crank it up above 25.2. So uh, it was 24, so uh, tab 1.2. And now when I select it, uh, I've got my level 10 there, which is actually my roof roof level. So uh, that's the, the, the quick uh, setup here for creating that building with a site. Uh, we can see we've got information by setting up our levels here on the volume and the area by level. We can also uh, give it a layer should we want to. So this one, if I just right click and uh, edit the name, I'll just call it mass01 just to start, start off at, and we just put on mass01. So if later we need to, uh, we need to turn that on, turn that off, we've got that information. You can also see here we've generated our, um, shadows so back in the top view we have our building orientated on our site and we can also uh, see how those shadows are going to be cast at certain times of the year so if i look at uh, first thing in the morning and if i go to say uh, summer in australia which is in, in january you can see the shadows are shorter because the sun's higher whereas if i go to uh, the winter you can see it's casting a much longer shadow here so it's built on the uh, real information that it pulled down from the site and should we want to we can also conduct uh, solar analysis so uh, what we've got here is the option to select the faces or the objects and then click analyze so this is a simple massing building i'll just select the uh, the main part of the building and we could look at here i'm going to do the month and go analyze and we can see here um, in the month of june we can see when we're getting uh, uh, the shadows on this far side of the building and if I spin around we've got a lot of um, peak sun hitting this this side of the building and uh, especially in the, the mornings uh, during the day so if I maybe drag it back to say summer when there's going to be a lot of um, sun on that facade and go analyze you can see here we're getting quite a bit of uh, intensity on this facade and this facade and this facade in fact a lot of the facades so we would probably want to look at some sort of uh, shading devices uh, all around the building here and the roof you could fill it with photovoltaics to uh, capture a lot of that sunlight whereas if we go back to uh, June July and just reset and again just uh, analyze that you can see this these facades of the building on the, the western sides aren't getting as much sunlight, but these ones are getting a reasonable reasonable amount. Also these ones here. So you could still need some sort of shading devices. Okay, so that is the uh, basic startup for Formit. Uh, getting up and running, massing up the building, creating some floor levels, some layers, and then doing a basic solar analysis.